Six Six started back in 1946 when then BGSU president Frank Prout gathered a group of six students into his office at 12.45 a.m. on October 5th to start what would become a 75-year-old tradition called Six Six. To have an organization that's lasted 75 years and to have you know, specific goals of creating spirit and encouraging you know, community and that on, on campus, it's something very special. I am so proud of how far it's come and how many people in this university know who Six Six is now. Six Six is like this icon. This is Bowling Green State University. I joined Six Six to give back to the BGSC community. It was also an opportunity for me to kind of step out of my comfort zone, do something uh, unique and different, while also kind of spreading spirit and providing that sense of community for other students on campus as well. My favorite part is probably helping people and then of course making them feel welcome because you know, if I can run around here in a mask being a goofball, then obviously, you know, you can fit in being yourself. I think Bowling Green is fortunate to have a spirit organization like this and it's neat to see it grow. Looking at the students today and what they're doing as a group, I'm very impressed um, with the, the students that are here and what they're doing to continue this tradition. It just keeps getting better. The people before me really laid the groundwork and really created the group to what it is now. So I'm forever grateful to our alumni and I just hope to keep improving the tradition and make the group better. It is an unusual organization and group but I think it's uniquely BGSU and I'm so thankful that past presidents, past administrators, staff and faculty and students have embraced this group, have created a space for them and helped them flourish and carry on the legacy over 75 years. Hypothesis. We're going to talk about vital signs, and the first piece we're going to talk about is blood pressure. So 120 over 84. So we have this poured on a sponge. We're going to turn on the green light. Wow. The sponge removes pollutants from water, leaving clean water behind. Yes. Amazing, right? Here at Bowling Green, I was able to like incorporate all the things that have made me me. You don't see a lot of African-American women in environmental science, and it's just encouraged me to like be that voice, be that person. So I feel like Bowling Green State University has really given me the opportunity to do that, and I'm so grateful that I am here. BGSU has offered me many opportunities that have led to very good things. It is life-changing for the better, and I definitely would pick BGSU again if I were to go back. BGSU is great because of the wide range of opportunities that it provides students. From all the organizations to research experience, there are many ways to fit in and belong. I think BGSU really sets up their students for success and it prepares them to succeed in the real world. A really important aspect here at BG 
is that like a lot of the people here and a lot of faculty here know what they're doing because they've been through it before and they're going to guide you in ways that they know that you would feel comfortable working with. I would choose BGSU again. The staff here is amazing. Professors, if you need anything at all, you email them and they respond right away and you can ask them for anything. I can almost feel comfortable offering any like suggestions or any comments or concerns about anything and always feeling like I can be respected and heard. And I think that's really what I like the most about BGSU. The BGSU film faculty have encouraged me to really create stories where I can see myself on screen and create work that feels really personal to me. I feel at home at BGSU because of the countless opportunities for social life and professional development. I would choose it again. Bowling Green State University and Cedar Fair Entertainment Company offer a Bachelor of Science degree in Resort and Attraction Management. Mom, I found my major. I love rides. I love theme and amusement parks. I just enjoy creating those experiences for other people. I ended up being a sonar operator on a submarine. I was on the USS Boise. And I wanted to transfer that into civilian side. During their first two years, they complete their general education coursework. Then they come over to Sandusky for their junior and senior years so they can focus just on resort and attraction management. This is two full years of an internship mixed with your classes. Your management and your area supervisors are your teachers. To be able to interact and learn from people that know a lot about this industry, I think they're going to really set me up for a good future. They have offered me so many opportunities. The uniqueness of the program and the way that it's catered towards hospitality and theme parks is going to be very appealing to a lot of different companies. You'll make a lot of connections with a lot of your peers, your faculty, staff. I have made some of the best friends I've ever had in my life. Our vision for this program is for it to be the place to come if you want to be a leader in the resort and attraction management field. Endings. They stir up so many emotions. Sadness, because... There's just something about this place. We hear it all the time. Once students visit our beautiful campus in the heart of Northwest Ohio, they're sold. Why? Because Bowling Green State University offers the ultimate college experience. Our 20,000 students come here from every state and more than 70 countries. They learn and play in one of the best college towns in America, a place that feels like home. We have over 200 majors and programs and the support and resources that allow you to learn your way. BGSU also offers unforgettable study abroad experiences and hands-on classroom and field research your first year. We'll connect you with internship opportunities and with our Falcon tuition guarantee, the amount you pay in year one will be the amount you pay in year four. We also offer so many ways to grow outside of the classroom, to meet new friends, to belong. From our nationally ranked club sports teams to our hundreds of student organizations. It's all part of our BGSU promise. We promise that you will graduate on time with minimal debt prepared for your career and for life. Our life design program sets us apart from other universities. Through life design, you can develop a personalized experience that helps you graduate, launch a successful career, and connect with more than 200,000 Falcon alumni around the world. Our entire campus community is invested in you, in your physical and mental well-being, in your success. So come see us. Find out why Bowling Green State University is the number one university in the Midwest that students would choose again. This month on The Rogers Report, Aviation. So tell me a little bit on why aviation. So originally for my freshman year, I was a finance major and I couldn't see myself working in an office forever. After a while, I noticed that I was really interested in aviation and I was like, this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. 
Tell me a little bit about your Bowling Green experience. It's been a great experience. I love it here. I love working here at the Flight Center. The people here at Bowling Green State University are great. What kind of career are you looking forward to? Well, a career in the Air Force. My experience here in aviation as well as at BGSU has, has helped me through that. So I'll be commissioning in December and I'll be ready to go off to the Air Force. How do I pull this out of the out of the hangar? There's a tow bar in the baggage compartment and so we'll grab that, attach it to the nose wheel and we'll pull her out. Connor, you're co-oping this term, right? What does that look like? So I'm a flight support here at Bowling Green Flight Center. So I'm just making sure the students are safe and happy with their flight, making sure that they get on time, get back safe, and just doing anything that I can do to help. Tell me about flying out of Wood County Airport on a day like today. It's busy. Our program is, is growing. Our students are really enjoying uh, moving into aviation. The industry is, really needs pilots. So with demand high, we are very busy here. We operate just about 20 airplanes. So we've got about 365 students right now in the program, and we fly from well before sunup to well after sundown. So Catherine and I, we are going to go flying, aren't we? So let's go. Here we go, sir. Power checks, airspeed's alive. Rotate. Falcon 1 has taken off. Falcon traffic, Seminole 442 Bravo Golf, 3,000 feet. All right, sir. So Catherine, tell me a little bit about the students when they graduate from Bowling Green. What are some of those career paths they've taken? So we have several specializations in aviation studies and our students can find employment for the flight side. You know, it, it could be all the way out to a regional airline. It could be a corporate flight department. With our management specialization, students are out and doing internships to network. When they're here doing co-ops, they're able to make those connections, so when they leave, they can work in any capacity that might serve that airport. BGSU Aviation has an amazing opportunity for our students because, you know, we offer them opportunities to get real-world flying while they're here in training, and so we will do extended cross-country flights. You know, many people will go on spring break, our students will stay, and we could do training flights to Charleston, South Carolina, or Daytona Beach, Florida, using their aircraft and their instructor to perform real-world training and get that experience. You know, on uh, spring break, if they need uh, someone to ride along with them, <laughs> let me know, would you? We will. Okay. As you know, at Bowling Green, we are very focused on, on being a public university and making sure that we're serving and creating public good. And part of that is making sure we have students who are meeting the workforce needs of our country and the world. So there is a demand for pilots right now. There's a right? huge demand, and pretty much as fast as we can train them and produce a valuable pilot, they're already in gainful employment. All right, sir, we're going to start to practice our power off stall. Props forward, power to idle, power all the way back. All the way back. And let's go ahead and begin our stall. Increasing back pressure, hand up on the power levers. Full, full power, lower your nose. Good, back up to the horizon. Climbing back up to a safe altitude. Excellent, sir. How are you doing? Great. What better way to start your day? This is a great way to start the day. Yeah. Runway is made, power comes to idle. We're gonna keep looking down that runway, Rodney. Down the runway. Great job. <laughs> you made it. Did a great job. Thank you, great flight instruction. You know, in May 2018, we did our first Rogers report. And during all of those Rogers report, there's been one gentleman that has been behind the camera that has put this all together. And Joe is standing next to me right now. He is leaving WBGU for his next journey down in Nashville. Thank you so much for what you have done for the Rogers Reports. We are gonna miss you. Will you come back and visit? Anytime, always happy to consult. <laughs> Which by the way, this is the perfect time. You don't mind if I use you as a reference, right? Hmm. Okay, all right, absolutely. Good, good. That looks great on a resume. <laughs> and thank you, Joe, for all the work you've done for WBGU. I appreciate it, Really sir. appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And may I? Yes. We'll see you next month on The Rogers Report.
Here's your delivery. Good evening and welcome into Slater Family Ice Arena on the beautiful campus of Bowling Green State University. Matt Crandall along with Chip Crennan. We got Bowling Green Club Hockey for you tonight versus the University of Michigan. And Chip, last time these two teams got together, we were in Ann Arbor at the beginning of the season and it was a third period comeback by the Falcons that got them the victory. It was an exciting game up there in Ann Arbor at Yost. Yeah, it was. Uh, the... Sorry, I'm just fixing some. Dial us in, dial us in yeah. over there, Chip, of course. The great Chip Crennan, not only on color tonight, folks, but he is on the technical board also. So, so any technical issues or color issues, you chipcrennan.com. Uh, I wish I had a .com. Uh, yeah, I think the Falcons have improved, and they've improved a lot in a lot of different areas. But they've also gotten worse in a lot of in one area in particular, and we'll mention that later in the pregame. But I think the Falcons have, were, are a stronger team now than they were when we played Michigan in Ann Arbor. All right, well, that bodes well, folks. Yeah, it was a 5-3 to three six, Michigan. 6-4. Was it a 6-4 win? Or 6-3. Ruto had a hat trick. That's all I remember. Okay, yeah, Ruto had the hat trick. I thought we were trailing by two going into the third. But, yeah, 
Big third period comeback in Ann Arbor. I'm sure we can get fact checked here on the Bowling Green Club Hockey Television powered by YouTube. Someone will respond. It was a long time ago, it was a big win. I got so excited. It made the drive home from Ann Arbor a lot nicer. But uh, what are the Falcons gonna have to do today? Give us our Irwin Interior Systems three keys to a Falcon victory tonight. And if you're even around the Pittsburgh area or anywhere else, you need some interior work done, IIS is the place to go. What do you got for us, Chip? Yeah, so I, I, got, I got some three interesting ones, came up, came up with them earlier today. Uh, every win is a must win in order for the Falcons to win their side of the TC TSCHL. Falcons are already in Okay, the hold on. TSCHL, Tri-State Collegiate Hockey League, of course, part of the ACHA. Coming right at you. Okay, go ahead, Chip. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in. <laughs> no, you're good. Trying to explain it to our... Yeah, so the conference that the Falcons are in, there's two divisions, and the division that the Falcons are in, they still have a chance to win it. They're already a lock for the postseason tournament as the top four teams on each side will make it five on our side, six on the other side. In total, so there'd be 11 teams, so the top eight pretty much will make it. Uh, but the Falcons still have a chance to win their side if they win out, to, if they win tonight and win the first game at Louisville this weekend, and then Ohio University if they lose to Kentucky. It sounds unbelievable, but anything is possible, yes. All right, every win is a must win, including tonight against Michigan, I like it. Yeah, and then last week, or not last week, pretty much a couple days ago, it was Crandall and Core, the Northwest Ohio guys beating uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, thank you. In the Omaha. Bearcats. Uh, so, yes, two points matters. Two over, hey, 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 hey. Two overtime wins for the Falcons last weekend against Cincy, home and away. Core and Crandall, correct, okay. And then that third one is who's your goalie? I think. No matter who the Falcons put in net, I think Mitch or Riley or even Tim, I think the Falcons play well in front of all three. So there's the, one lineup change. We'll get to that shortly. But uh, I think the Falcons have got good goaltending for the majority of the season. The problem is their style has kind of been run and gun up and down, had trouble protecting the net front early in the season. But you're right. I think whoever's in goal gives them a good chance to win. Certainly they have a great chance to win here tonight. Yeah, and then I mentioned the lineup changes, not in the three keys, but Logan Harchie, he's out with an injury. So Johnny Roush, Falcons dressing six defensemen, 13 forwards, and then Riley Martin in net tonight for the Falcons. Okay, Martin will go in net, and Roush will Slide pencil in. in on defense. In, right into Harchie's spot. So Trent Trey, Cranick, Gran Granica Crandall, and then Sarnowski and uh, Roush, your D pairs. This forward lines stay the exact same. Same 13, the only 13 that are left as we've had some players drop, whether that's due to an eligibility or to schoolwork or to uh, crew ending injuries. I know some guys have been focused on trying to get out of school on time. Parents said, I'll give you four years and no more. So time to get down to business, get your studying done. Yeah, so no starting lineup or national anthem today uh, due to, as you can see, there's only one person down there due to the amount of scratches we have, uh, do the Falcons have. The Falcons will start out with Horvath's line with Kleinow on his left, Nitschke on his right. He doesn't Trent and Trey on defense. All right, ACH, ACHA hockey coming right at you. Horvath will step in with Nitschke and Kleinow up front. You mentioned Zebel and Gray. Horvath wins the draw. Nitschke tried to get it in deep, couldn't get far. Kleinow's in, he's got a chance to shoot it on the net. Oh boy, that got blocked there by Michigan. A good chance for the freshman Jack Kleinow right off the get-go. Big so we talked, uh, we've talked a lot this year about missed opportunities. Well, when you miss the net or get a shot blocked, that's a missed opportunity. Look at Horvath go. Great jump here. The problem was no one was jumping with him. He dropped it back and 
Dubendorfer and Ferry were late getting there. This is gonna be an icing on Michigan, a Michigan team that looks a little discombobulated early. So offensive zone faceoff here. Second hey. line through for BG will be Coor, Ferry, and Dubendorfer. This line's been good. Yeah, I call them, I call them the under 5'10 line. Hey, <laughs> appropriately <laughs> enough. I'd fit right in. <laughs> All right, Ferry, the high-flying winger. Coor, the slick, playmaking center who can actually score big goals. And including hat-tricks. And the hat-trick last week, also the overtime winner. Yeah, that was a beauty. Overtime winner for the hat-trick. <laughs> drop the puck. <laughs> and Dubendorfer, the under 5'10 power forward. <laughs> oh, that was tipped in front by Coor, a hot shot by Ferry. Crandall steps up in the zone, got to the goal line. That was it. Dubendorfer kept it in, gave it to Coor. Coor looking back door for Ferry. He's going to have to work it out of the corner. Falcons all over the Wolverines right now. Ferry lost it, had to roll it in deep. Falcons are going to try a high to low cycle here. Yeah. Dubendorfer helping out with Coor and Ferry, all three guys in there. They're getting physical already. A lot of clutching and grabbing here behind the play, but it's been BG on the attack. A really good chance by Kleinow got blocked. Here's Crandall from the point. Stepped around one guy. Couldn't get around the second. Tried to get something going with Coor along the boards. Now Coor steps away with it. Gave it in front to Dubendorfer, and he just missed. Smart play there by Dubendorfer to not force the offside and allow the rest of the Falcons to change up. Third line out now. If well, the line started out with an offensive zone faceoff that last line did, and they never, Michigan never got it out of the zone. Now here's a chance for Updike, Rudo, and Seals. This line's been able to get a lot of good chances in their games. But you mentioned the Rudo hat trick last time we played against Michigan, so Mark's looking to get back on the board here, get his scoring ways back going. Seal steps in. It looked like he won the faceoff. Roush is able to clear it up the boards. Rudo behind the net, he's gonna walk it around the world. He looks back for Roush. Roush put the shot on, but it got blocked up and into the netting. So Chip, maybe you want to track this tonight because that wasn't a great opportunity, but we had traffic in front. Got to get pucks to the net. Got to look for second and third opportunities. Blocked shots will not work for the Falcons. Yeah, and good shot choice. Not a Well, that was your fourth key to, to the game, to winning, I know, today. It just didn't make the top three. Barely missed. Yeah, good keep there from Roush. Oh, here's Updike. Nice play. Tried to get around two guys. Force Michigan up the wall, and the easiest breakout of the evening for Michigan. Sarnowski played his man wide. Updike got the takeaway, gave it to Rudo. Rudo could not get far. Michigan with a chance here, two on two. Seals is back to help the Falcons out in their own end. Odell with a partial change. Now Jaro, so head out for his first shift. Your favorite. One of your favorites. Can't say your favorite, because you probably like your son, probably the favorite. <laughs> yeah, don't forget Shooty the Beauty. I like Shooty too, so a lot of guys I like on this team. Including the defense here. I like this pair, Zebul. He decides he's going to pin his ears back and take this one. Zone to zone to zone, got to the Blue offensive hooked. zone, blew a tire, actually blew two tires, it looked on the play, and a two on one coming back for oh, Michigan. Got broken up with some good back pressure there by Shooty, and now Zebo wants to go inside out on his guy. Got the puck around him, but couldn't get far. Here's oh. Odell with a great chance. One of the better shots on the team does Odell. I've mentioned that before, Jaros just chops at it. Comes on net. But Odell's shot, I believe, got through, got punched to the corner by the Michigan goaltender. 
And that shot came through right across the crease. Nodell had a chance at that. In case you're wondering who's in net for Michigan, I am wondering the same thing. And it's number 40, but I don't have him on my roster. So let's see. Meanwhile, Horvath with a steal. Granica. Here's Granica with a chance right up the middle. Can he shoot it through traffic? No, he tried to drag and shoot and lost the puck. Horvath all over it. Why not? He's been all over every puck this season, it seems like, for the Falcons. He laid that one in front. Couldn't hook up, hook up with Kleinow. Granica back in his own end. Wants to regroup with Crandall. And he finds it. Crandall goes cross ice. Kleinow tried to chip it in. That one came up and over the Michigan bench. It'll be a neutral zone faceoff here. And right BG's going to change it up. Former clubber or the linesman today for the for today's game, Harrison Hall. Of course, his dad's one of the refs as well. Michigan goes into the zone. Shot goes saved by Martin as he blocked it into the corner. Falcons on the breakout core, trying to stretch pass up to his roommate in Dubendorfer. Couldn't get it there. Now fair with the net drive. This good action right here by the Falcons. Yeah, Dubendorfer would have been all alone Rouse. had Coor been able to get that to him. Here's Sarnowski. And Nolan's gonna turn back in his own end, finds Roush. This good puck movement here by the Falcons. Linesman got in the way, but that didn't stop Coor. He's gonna lead this rush, three Falcons in there. Dubendorfer in front. Puck the power the forward air. tries to slam it through. Couldn't find it, Ferry does. He goes low to high, Sarnowski a chance to put one on net. That got through, four bodies in front, two Falcons, two Wolverines, but Michigan's goaltender is able to track that one rather nicely. I'm just telling you, Chip, I'm looking at the roster. They got three goalies, excuse me, four goalies rostered. What are their numbers? Number one, number 30, 32, and 39. It's one or 32. Okay, so it's okay. Riley Noble out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, the senior, or Drew Dobbledick from Jenison, Michigan. So we'll go with Riley Noble, who knows? There's Maybe a we'll chance get a comment here, here from a Michigan fan. For Updike. Or I can get a picture of the Updike. Back to Zebo in his own end. Trey comes around his own goal. Oh. Tried to lay one up for Seals. Stretched that one right up the middle, just missed. And Benny was ahead of the pack there. And Seals met his man right there, knocked him to the ice. Michigan's content to just knock this one in. Seals is back for it. He wants to get the wheels going. Forgot to take the puck with him. Lost it at the red line. Michigan pumps it back in. The captain grazed there for Bowling Green and played it over to his partner. Can't get it, it out It was though. Trey Zebel. Falcons couldn't get it out and Riley Martin takes that shot to the chest. And number 33, your Falcon goaltender, the pride of Livonia, Michigan, was right there to make the save. Got the whistle. Falcons able to get a change. Shoot these lines out. Good block there by Odell. Get a stick in the lane. Puck in the corner there. Crandall hit his man. And puck got worked over to Granica. Yep, here goes Odell. He was able to knock it in. Patton. Set of Jaros now. Patton got in on the four check, but Michigan was forced to ice it. Oh, I thought it was icing. No Way call. Granica played it to Crandall. Crandall tripped behind his own goal. Tripped himself. And got away from one defender, but Michigan's able to pump it back in. So not much of a forecheck going for Michigan, but they're dumping the puck in. That's for sure. Shooty spins off his man. Got to the 
just shy of the red. It looked like that may have been an icing, but it oh. wasn't. Plays out in front to Patton. And he had a good chance in the back door. Now Patton to Horvath. Great pass there from Patton, the Benedictine slash Holy Name product. Excellent play there by Patton. He's a defenseman by trade, but you can see he got some forward skills right there. And speaking of forward skills, Horvath got a tip on that one. And then looked like the rebound was available too. Cam whacked at that once or twice. He got chirped at by the captain of the Wolverines. But Horvath stays out here, wins this draw over to Kleinow. Almost a bing bang playoff, an unconventional set in the offensive zone. It's a chance for Michigan from the point. This was tipped in front. I'm not sure if Riley got a piece of that, Martin, or not. Ooh. Two on one if the Falcons can hurry. Horvath with Nitschke. Michigan's able to clear the zone. Gray hammers it back in for BG, but Michigan's got an easy out, and they just want to dump this one in. Put it, tried to put it on net, just missed. Maybe Martin got a piece of it. Klein now with a chance to get the neutral zone, didn't get much further. Michigan with a regroup in their own end. Some good patience here by Michigan. They haven't shown a lot of patience here in the first period. Bowling Green's been unable to capitalize. They were almost halfway through the first. Matt Crandall and Chip Crennan with you. Slater Family Ice Arena. Good Bowling Green that. State University in Bowling Green, Ohio. I would say just about 60 miles away, Ann Arbor and Bowling Green. Of course, the old CCHA rivals. Great pass here by Ferry. Dubendorfer had three guys to get by. He couldn't Ooh. do it. Nice move there by number 61 for Michigan. There's a rush by Michigan. Three, oh, three on two, they had it. Looked for the back door. The puck got through. Michigan couldn't get the redirect, though. Wolverine still with good <laughs> pressure. Core. In front, we got some action with Sarnowski and his man, and here's Coor ready to walk one out. Dubendorfer tried to get it in deep, couldn't. Michigan offsides on the play, and that was possibly the worst shift by the Falcons this game. And they get out of there with an offsides, though. Yeah, easiest offsides call, to, I'd say. One of the easiest offsides calls to make. Nice pass there, Crandall tipped in though by Updike. Zebel to Crandall, Updike in. Here's a bing bang play here. Rudo looking for goal number four on the season against the Wolverines. And a good chance there by Mark. He was covered in front, but he got to the front of the blue paint and set up shop. Updike did well to get it to him. A good Falcons. looking play here by Michigan. Good patience here and a set breakout. Yeah, the Falcons do a better job defending it. Crandall tried to jump it, it wasn't there. Now he's gonna walk it up through the neutral zone, got the red, now the blue. Got around one and two guys. Oh. Tried to go up high, top shelf. Puck almost rolled up to Updike. Didn't quite get out front to him. Andrews in the corner with it now. Him and Rudo, good forecheck in here. Rudo gets the takeaway. Now Michigan tries to slam it up the boards. Crandall and Seals are able to hold it in there. Good block. But Michigan turns it up into the neutral zone and zebel has got to punch it back the other way. Crandall with a chance here. This is delayed off sides. So Falcons are gonna look for a change. Patton first one out. He's got Granica out there with him. Now Granica gets the takeaway, gave it to Patton. Patton's shot was blocked. Shot this is right a one-on-one on one here for Michigan. The shot comes from well outside. Riley Martin with no problem there. Some early touches here by Martin. He looks to be dialed in. Yeah. Um, 8.18 to go. Frank Fee. Thank you. Frank Fee's your goalie for Michigan. Frank Fee. All right. Well, Frank Fee has been playing well. 
Nice pass there, Jaros. Three on two if the Falcons two. can hurry. And this is Jaros, got shooty with him, oh! Them. oh. Good idea there. Good job by Jaros to stay on side. It was a bad pass there from Shooty. Low to, high. Low to high here. That shot was blocked. Here's Jaros with a chance for a wrister. That was blocked. The theme, Chip. Are you catching on to the theme in the first period? Yeah, I'm just going to shoot the puck into the other. Block shots. <laughs> block shots. Change the angle, guys. Look for option B. Just wait an extra half a second, whatever you want to do, drag and shoot, push and shoot. Right, if I remember correctly, number two for Michigan, he was he had a couple points against the, the Falcons. Oh, well, I'm sure he did. It was a shootout up in Ann Arbor when they got together early in the season. And this guy right here, 61, has been very impressive in the first period here for the Wolverines. And here's a chance, oh, in front, nice play by Gray. The captain, Trent, got it to Shooty. Shooty to Jaros. Jaros going to slap one Ooh. in from center ice. That was right on. F1. Fee made the save. And there's what I love. When that defenseman is in as the first forward, they really do forecheck hard. And Gray was able to get it. Got it, worked it back to Klein. Now oh. this shot hit the post. Shot had That's eyes. Nitschke was, Nitschke was in front. And it was the jack attack from the blue line. Kleinow, here's a chance there. Kleinow couldn't grab that pass from Sardowski. It had to come in high and hot. Nitschke ducks a shoulder there. Ooh, nice pass from Kleinow. Zebo tipped wide, or blocked wide, I'd say. I'm not sure if Trey tried to shoot that one off the net or what he was doing there, but... Oh, no, a chance here for Michigan. Good Puck just there. rolled off a Z Bull stick. Now it's a low to high. And, and it looks like. Oh, oh boy! Oh it looks boy. like the Wolverines were in business. But a what great a save by what Riley Martin. And I know when Chip's on the dials here, folks, he's going to rewind that one for you. So if you want a little Riley Martin, take a look at this. It looked like the Falcons. Good setup there by Michigan. Drew all the Falcons over to one side. Number four walks in. Drew Martin out of the crease. Oh boy. Martin with the desperation save. Riley Martin with a big save, the best save of the period for either goaltender keeps this one scoreless. And it may have taken Michigan a few minutes to get going, but they're going now, Chip. And once again, Falcons chasing here. Chance for Zebol. He couldn't work it out. Oh, and the shot came off the side of the net right in front. And one, two chances here for the Wolverines to get on the board first. They can't. Dubendorfer tries to chop it out. It's not going to go. It's an all-out assault here by Michigan. Yet to score, but heavy pressure the last three shifts here. Run them all through and run them through hard. That's what Michigan's done here. Sarnowski, oh, the oh. nice play here to Coor. Three on two if BG hurries. Coor with a chance to get it to Dubendorfer. That play. That Pass was blocked, and it's a two-on-two -two with speed the other way. Mitchell drops it. Here's a chance in front, and that shot just missed. And the Falcons now at least getting some blows in of their own, but Michigan got their foot on the gas pedal here, and they want to open up the scoring. It looks like they want to do it here in the first period. Five minutes to go. Still plenty of time. Michigan playing their best hockey of the game right now. Seals with a takeaway for Bowling Green. Got it to Updike, but he couldn't get far. Crandall got pinned back in his own end. Got it to Updike. Updike fighting for it now in the corner. Michigan will walk away with it. Got it in front. Crandall got it backed up. Like now, Andrew's going to skate it out of there. He'll take it right up the Ooh, middle. Oh, oh a point. bull rush by Updike. Almost pulled through. He had Rudo with him. Two guys that can score the puck right there, but Michigan, good defense to shut it down. And speaking of good defense, that was Crandall and Granica able to shut down the two-on-two -two the other way. They want to go firehouse hockey now, end-to-end. -end. Oh, too early to be on it. It's kind of the, the, what I was talking about to start the game at the introduction. 
It's kind of the style that we've played. We don't mind going up and down. You look up, it hasn't hurt us yet. It hasn't really helped us. But let's just say the defense has been loose here for both teams, but they've been able to shut it down when they've had to. That shot just missed. Jaros with a chance to clear, he does. Gets it to Shooty. Shooty knocks oh. it in deep. Fee, oh, had that roll off his stick and almost in front of the net. But once again, it's a pretty easy out for Michigan here. It's a guy with his head up and his feet moving. Oh. You're gonna take it through everybody, but Crandall at the end. Able to level him. Put a nice hit on 62. But it's going to be an offensive zone for the Wolf, offensive zone faceoff for the Wolverines. They win it. Oh, and get the chance in front. Got tipped, but bounced out to John Jaros. Jaros gets the red. Now the blue cross corner dump. See if Shooty can get there and make something happen with the four check. And the Wolverines roll off two Falcon four checkers. Now oh, Crandall going the other way. There's a chance. Here for BG, he just flips one in, a double hop, 50 cent, bouncing on the net. Falcons want to change, they do get the chains. Gray blocks this one as it comes across, a two on one in the back pressure there by Jaros and Odell with a good back check, able to clean it up, Martin gets the whistle. A little loose for my liking here, Chip, but why not? 3.11 to go in the first period. Open it up. See what we can do. Yeah. Can't Falcon, yeah, you can't sit back and play defense all game. Yeah, something I really like that the Falcons do is they roll four lines consistently. They know who's going up next, make it easy on, on themselves. And meanwhile, Horvath's going to go possibly two on one, but couldn't get there in time. No, that's a couple chances that the Falcons have had the numbers, but just that first pass hasn't been there. They haven't been able to catch up to it. A good takeaway here by Horvath, and Klein now got it right back to him. Horvath has Nitschke with him. Cam makes a good move to the oh. front. Oh, tried to find Klein now late. Zebo with a nice play of the blue line, went back door to Nitschke. Nitschke had to take it skate to stick. Couldn't get the quick play he wanted to the back door, but oh, Nitschke's back in. with it. Oh, he walks off the corner and rips one. Nitschke with a good chance here. I like the way this Horvath, Klein, and Nitschke line has played. I think I think ever since they've been together, they've they've been the Falcons' most consistent line. There you go. You got it from Chip Crennan right there. The color guy likes the color that this line provides for BG. Nitschke, good work in the corner. Two guys on him. A little support there from Horvath, but. Michigan's able to walk it oh. out and just walked it out too quick. Tried to stretch it up. But it was a three on two rush that Michigan was just a little too excited on. Went off sides, but you can tell they've been excited about the last 10 minutes. They've really been going at BG attacking. They were defending the first 10 minutes. They've been attacking the last 10, and that means we're winding down the first period. So Ooh, Zeeble hit, with Zeeble. a heavy hit. Five plus five is 10, and that was a 10 right there. And a fight for the puck here, Michigan. Oh. Oh, we got a penalty. And Coor, Coor had his stick up and underneath the Michigan player. He clamped down and made sure the ref knew the hook was there. 146 remaining in the first. Luke Coor is going to go first penalty of the game. First Bowling Ooh. Green penalty oh, of the game. Penalty, it's a oh hook, chip. And if the Falcons can do some work for 146, they'll get that free whistle. And it'll be a short power play coming back in the second for Michigan of 14 seconds. So minute 46 to kill here of the two minutes. And then BG will get the break. That's a hard around there. Was it hard enough? Yes, it was. Will it get all the way down? Yes, it will. Sarnowski got in. Wasn't sure if he put enough mustard on that one, but he did. It was a good face-off win by BG and kill off that first 45 seconds. 
Something else I just realized, Michigan doesn't only has 12 guys on their bench, so they're only running with 17 skaters. Chance here for Ferry to get away. Dubendorfer's with him. Now Ferry has Duby. Cole got worked up along the boards by two Michigan Wolverines. And he's tired from that penalty kill. Michigan, this is gonna be an icing. Granica got there early though. Negated the icing, was able to knock it all the way down and out. Oh, here's a chance for Seals in front. Couldn't stretch to get that slow pass. And Michigan having trouble getting set up with the man advantage. Now they get a good zone entry and a little patience. But not patient enough. Tried to force one in front. Granica walks it out. Three on two. Has Seals with him. And Ruto drive. Oh, boy. Ruto went right to the net. Granica put it there. That shot got on Fee. Short-handed, but he made a oh, rather that's... easy save. Granica came up and underneath his guy. No hook there. Could have been. Aiden is able to knock it all the way down. 10 seconds remaining in the period. Falcons doing a good job here. Short-handed. We call that penalty killing chip. Killing that penalty off and the Falcons have done it. A minute 46 killed, 14 seconds coming back. What are your quick thoughts on that first period? Yeah, I think uh, Falcons dominated first half, Michigan dominated second half. Pretty self-explanatory there. And really the biggest save I think of the period Smart. came by Riley Martin. So a couple of chances on fee for Bowling Green, but not enough quality I didn't think. Talk about Riley Martin though, a couple of big good, real big saves for him. Yeah, I think Martin, like we mentioned pregame, uh, no matter what goalie in, I think all three goalies would have made the, that save that Martin made. So I think it just comes down to rest for the Falcons and I think the Falcons are capable of coming out, winning this game, winning their first game in Louisville, and then winning their, their side of the T TSCHL. Of course, TSCHL, the Tri-State Collegiate Hockey League, part of the ACHA, coming right at you. Speaking of coming right at you, second period will be coming right at you. After this short Zamboni break, you're watching Bowling Green Club Hockey Television, powered by YouTube, Matt Crandall and Chip Crennan, We'll be right back with you, folks, after this short break. Bowling Green in Michigan tied up at zero after 20 minutes.
back. Check. Check. We should be good now.
We're on. Good morning and welcome back to the Slater Family Ice Arena, Bowling Green, Ohio. It's the Bowling Green Falcons versus the University of Michigan Wolverines. Matt Crandall and Chip Crennan with you on Bowling Green Club Hockey Television powered by YouTube, ACHA Action. Coming right at you. Chip, three goals in that second period. Technical difficulties though for the audience. Why don't you tell them what happened? Yeah, oh, if you tuned into our, our quick redo stream there, you saw, you saw that Aiden Granica, he got his first career collegiate goal. And then it was Johnny Jaros. Was that Aiden's first career? Because yes. that was a real beauty. He clapped that thing up from inside the blue line. It found its way through traffic, top shelf. Got the Falcons in business. And then my boy put the Falcons up by two. J Johnny Jaros with, I talk about Johnny's speed and power all the time. That shot had a lot of power to it and just really worked its way through the goaltender and in for a two goal lead. Michigan then, a power play, goal of their own. Power play that shouldn't have been a power play. Well, there was a questionable holding call for sure and then Horvath was interfered with on the penalty kill, got a stick knocked out of his hand, basically putting the Falcons down five on three. Here's a chance for Zebo though. He was really hopping in that second period. Trey lets that one go. Got deflected up and into the glass. Play is still alive. And Falcons make a partial change. And towards the end of that third period or second period, Luke Coor went down. He's out for the rest of the game. And I'm hearing it may be something muscular, so. Luke's gonna be done for today's game, but I believe he'll be good for the weekend in Louisville. Friday night, eight o'clock, will be the first tilt in Louisville. Two games for the Falcons in Kentucky this weekend. There's a chance for Dubendorfer to get it deep. He couldn't. Randall came up, hit his man. And chance for Dubendorfer to get it to Shooty. He does. And Shooty got it up the wall to Ferry. Ferry's on his backhand. But oh. he made a play in front to Dubendorfer. This one got in on goaltender Frank Fee. But he made the save for Michigan. Trouble tracking it off the other side. But he stayed in front of the puck. Kept this a one goal game. Oh, Dubendorfer in the slot. Ferry, check your stick there, buddy. Oh, he's hooked. That'll be a penalty. Ferry had a chance from 40 feet. And the clapper didn't go for him. And maybe he's got a broken stick. Stick is not broken. The psyche no, is. The psyche's bent. He, is, he the stick broke is it. broken. <laughs> the he stick broke it. is broken. So Ferry's gonna need a new stick. Falcons will go on the power play. Horvath, Nitschke, Seals with Granica and Rudo. Falcons could really use a power play goal here. Horvath tries to walk through on the power play. Michigan unable to clear though. Granica holds it in. And back door for Horvath to Rudo. That's off. The net has been knocked off. Nitschke set up shop in front. Looked like the Falcons were in business. A good keep on the point by Granica. He whipped one down to Horvath. Rudo's the shooter, they had him. Granica keeps it in and of course he took, he's taking Trent Gray's spot. He's a little banged up as well. Good face off win there by Horvath but Michigan's gonna get a chance to clear here and they will. Can only get it to the Falcon end. Horvath tried to step away from his guy. Threw it. He broke it on Horvath. Seven hundred dollars worth of sticks in the last thirty seconds. The season's winding down. It's not what you want to see. There's a chance for Rudo. 
Wheels it around for Seal. Seal's in front. Back to Rudo. Rudo shoots. Tried to get it under the arm of Fee. But that fee was a little too expensive. <laughs> He's not paying it. Yeah. And Rudo and Seals there, they're on the same page though. Seals says, yep, just wheel it around to me again and get ready to shoot it. Good win by Horvath here on the backhand. So it looked like Horvath won the faceoff. The play got broken up and then right back to Cam. Horvath threw a backhand on net. The puck follows good players, Chip. And it has been following Horvath around all season. Northview and Northview out there with Granica. Seals and Horvath working it. There's a oh. shot here. A set play oh, in front. It scores. Oh. It's the Cam man. Cam Horvath. Did I say that the Falcons could use a power play goal? Yes, I did. Did Horvath deliver? Yes, he did. A minute 13 in. Falcons regain the two goal lead. Chip. Yeah. Mark just, one up for the good guys, buddy. Yeah, Three to one. Yeah, I, I just think it was a good good job driving the net there. Um, Started with Horvath winning the faceoff, and then him and Seals were on the same page. Yeah. Great setup to Horvath for the shot. Nitschke was in front to keep the play alive. You said it. It's alive. It's alive. It's loose. It's loose. Next thing you know, Horvath's Ooh, on it, and it's in. Drag whiff. Ooh, the dragon shoot. No, the dragon whiff, but I'm going to tell you what. This 61, he is a dangerous character for Michigan. Watch out. Here's a chance in front. Wolverines pressing. Crandall behind his own net ran into Granica. Got to his backhand, but couldn't get it out. Smart cover there by Martin. And Michigan pounds one on net. Martin's able to make the save and gets the whistle, as you said. Falcons are going to change up the forward unit. Stick with Granica and Crandall in the back end. Riley Martin has been impressive. A chance for Seals. Walk it out. He got stripped. And that shot just missed. Rudo with a chance to get it out. He will. No icing on this play. Great pace on that dump by Rudo. Falcons with a light fort check though. Seals can't break it. Neither could Rudo. Well, yeah, but good job clogging up the neutral zone and Zebul's able to just knock it back in the Michigan end. Well, Michigan wants to play in the BGN, so they hammer one in behind Martin. Zebul played it up the wall to Updike. Updike got around the first man. And just like the running back in football, you beat that first guy, you got a little bit of room. Falcons on the attack here. Good four check going. Seals first one on it. He's got good support here from Updike. Oh, but Michigan, their defenseman here, he wants to walk it out himself. Couldn't there. get it by Sarnowski, though. Nolan did a good job to step up, keep the play in front of him, and keep the play moving forward. Dubendorfer is going to step out here with Schutte and Ferry. This shot here by Michigan is blocked. Trey Zebo with the block. Can Trey do it all? Yes, he can, folks. Shooty. Caught third, though. Plenty of time for Michigan. So things are going to have to get buttoned up by the Falcons here. And, of course, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, in Ann Arbor earlier in the season, BG got the win, so... Things going good against the Wolverines right now for the Falcons. Just a little bit of work to do still, Chip. Uh, yeah. Sorry, making sure the stream's working still. Folks, we had a computer reboot right in the middle of that first and second intermission, and it took a while to boot back up for us, but we're glad to have you with us. Yesterday has turned into today, and a one-goal lead's turned into a two-goal lead here in the third for BG. There's a chance for Horvath to clear. He will. This has a little bit on it, though. Falcons will not be able to change. That's going to be an icing. Horvath, Kleinow, Nitschke forced to stay on the ice. Crandall and Granica. It's not a 
dog, dead dog tired shift. It's just a tired shift right now, so they got a little bit of gas left in the tank. Maybe a quarter tank left here, so they're gonna have to get back to the bench and get filled up. But they're gonna have to do a little work to try to clear the zone first. That shot from Michigan just missed. Oh, and Horvath was almost away with Kleinow. Pass was behind him. Good look by Nitschke. They just couldn't connect. Kleinow now, he will get it deep. Got rubbed into the boards for it. Patton's out there for the Falcons. One third of a change. Now it's complete. Jaros and Odell will complete it. Sarnowski out here with Zebel. Sarnowski moves it up to Odell. Odell comes in, winds and deals. Patton, Patton with a rebound on the backhand. So an innocent looking rush turned into a good chance for Patton. The converted defenseman, Chip, has been doing all right up at forward here today. No, he's always been a forward. Has he always been a forward? Yeah. Yeah, maybe he used to be a D before that. I remember one time in Mites when he was that defenseman. Nolan Patton? Yeah, in Mites. He played in Cleveland. Yeah, I remember it. Oh, okay. All right. I've seen a lot of hockey in my days, Chip. Matt Crandall and Chip Crennan with you folks. This is Trey Zebel, and look at him go. He's going to lead this three on two for the Falcons. He wants to do a one on one, though. Tried to step outside in on his guy. Couldn't get what he wanted. Now Sarnowski's forced back in his own end. There's heavy pressure on him. Nolan's going to have to move this puck quick. He did. Couldn't get it up and out of the zone, though. Patton saying he did not trip the guy. The guy just fell down with a little bit of a help. And here's a chance here for the Wolverines. And it was a good looking that chance again. Outside. Another great looking chance by Michigan and that was number 61. And you know what? I'm gonna take a look. And of course they don't have 61 on here. 53 to 73. So 61. I feel the love here because I'm giving it to you. You've played a good game here tonight. I've been very impressed with your play. There's a chance for Michigan there. That was right on. And Martin did a good job not only to track it, but to steer that rebound to the corner. Falcons were able to clear it temporarily. Now Rudo's away. He's got some speed going through the neutral zone. Tried to set up Updike in front. That play was thwarted by who else? Number 61, but back to Updike. He tried to find Seals. Just ahead of Seals, and this forces BG back in their own end. It's Crandall. He dropped the shoulder, got the red, knocked it in. Took a rough ride. Didn't get the red. Excuse me. No, he did not get the red. This is going to be an icing. So Michigan was at the end of a change. And only one man to get off and now BG though they're forced to stay out there. Rudo Updike and Seals though, plenty of energy. And Crandall behind his own net with Granica. This one's forced out in front. Momentum, both teams like the matchup. Michigan wins the faceoff. Controls it down in the corner. Seals works over his Ooh, guy with heavy Updike. Hit on Updike. Granica didn't like that. Of course, those two played high school together. Crandall's away now. He got hooked and was able to clear it up into the Michigan line, but not much further. Now Rudel's able to knock it all the way in. Now the Falcons are ready for a change. Granica and Crandall still out there as a defensive pair. They're going to play catch. Ferry's going to try to get his speed up through the neutral zone. Granica lost the puck, but it came right to himself. Dropped it for Dubendorfer. Doobie's got a chance here. Snapped one up high. Ferry tried to juggle it and couldn't keep it alive. Falcons do make the change on the D. Zebul back now. And now this is Ferry away. Two. Three on three two. Three on two. Dubendorfer with him. And here's Shooty. Oh. oh, and Shooty laid it on the pads. The rebound came fat to Ferry. Now he couldn't control it. They had half a net to shoot at. Michigan with a chance here to clean something up in front. And Martin makes a big save there. Shooty tried to put Dubendorfer away, but 
He didn't have any speed going through the neutral zone. He wants to get a change. Speed through the Two neutral zone. Yes, oh. please. Horvath has it. He was fresh off the bench. Horvath had Nitschke with him. Looked like the Falcons had something going there. This shot from the outside got through Zebel and got on Martin in a hurry, but Riley took it up high and was able to get the whistle. I think he wanted to keep that play alive if he could, but he had trouble jugging it off the shoulder. Had to hold up. And oh, Michigan wins this and tries to bull rush, stuff this one in through Martin. Puck was covered by Martin, then it got knocked loose. Michigan did not like the early whistle. I'm not sure it was an early whistle, Chip. How's the technical issues going? Oh, we're fine now. We're fine now. Thank you, 238 total views tonight, folks. More than that, 30, probably. 38 concurrent views currently. So we appreciate you tuning in, staying up. And, and I have to say this, Chip, it's been an absolute pleasure calling the games this year. And once again, we're in a barn burner here, a nail biter. Ooh, that's a high hit on Nitschke. Two goal game, Nitschke controlled it behind the net. Now it's Kleinow, Kleinow tries to turn. He just avoided a big hit. And now Horvath worked it back to Zebo. That's a nice looking set up here by the Falcons. Oh, Sarnowski set up shop in front. That puck was not covered. Sarnowski took a shot from number seven, tried to quickly get out there. <laughs> Horvath chased him to the bench. He just said run. You could hear Sarnowski say, run away. Run away. Acha hockey for you, folks. Ooh, he's a little runaway. All right, folks. Bowling Green Club Hockey Television powered by YouTube. That's right, A-C-H-A -A action coming right at you. Chip Crennan tells me the Falcons still have a chance to win the TSCHL, their half of the division, which, okay, a win against Michigan tonight is going to go a long way. Got some work to do in Louisville this weekend, but Falcons playing good hockey after back-to-back -back overtime wins against Cincinnati last weekend. It was Luke Coor with an overtime winner. Hat trick goal in game number one for all the points, all the goodies. And then in game two, down in... Cincinnati, David Crandall with the overtime winner. And what looked like was going to be a disaster down there. That was an exciting third period for sure. Ooh, did you go or? No, I sat home and enjoyed the YouTube broadcast from Cincinnati. Big block And uh, put a lot of pressure on us tonight to try to perform here. Here's a chance for Michigan to shoot through. Big Got pads. by Granica on the legs of Martin, but he made a good save. Crandall tried to one-hand it around, couldn't get it by. Second chance did. Good support here by Michigan. Something yep. going behind the net. 17 and 17 is 34, by the way. If you haven't noticed, Trent Gray, he's yet to pick a play a shift in the third period. Oh, picked off by Jaros there. Here's Jaros good. goes the other way. Good speed, and Jaros gives it to Patton. Patton, oh, oh just missed top shelf right there. Patton with a great chance there. Just missed, Michigan pulls up, tries to find the late man. Here's a big shot there. Missed, but couldn't get out. Almost a free out there for the Falcons. Great setup by the Wolverines. And right now, BG back on their heels. Martin plays this one around to Jaros. Good leave. Great Odell. puck protection there by Jaros. Gives it to Odell. What a oh. shot by Odell. Oh. This boy can shoot the puck. Odell ripped this one hard and low to the glove side. And Fee did a good job to keep this a two goal game. 7-11 remaining in the third period. Chip, I was saying, it's been an absolute pleasure this year yeah. to call the games with you. And uh, hopefully next year we can get together again. Falcons are going to have two games in Louisville this weekend. I have a prior engagement. Chip will be down there, folks. You can catch it on the BG Club Hockey Television powered by YouTube. Chip's going to be on the call. Here's a chance oh! for Updike. He what rang it off the iron. Michigan. Oh, I think Updike caught the crossbar on I that one. Michigan player got a stick on it. Gray is out there, by the way. That's good to see out here with Zebo. Now it's back to Seals. He hammers one. Oh, and Seals just missed 
on the big clapper from the point. Zebo back one on one. Pins his man against the wall, but it's an aggressive forecheck here by Michigan. The support comes late. Now Michigan's able to work it low to high. The shot comes through. Just missed. I'm not sure if that got redirected in front or not. Here's the captain. Oh, Zebel's gassed. Grant, Trent Gray has a chance to clear this one. He does. Rudo knocks it in deep. Falcons are tired. It was a good shift by BG up and down. Michigan pushing the pace here late as they trail by two goals. Oh, the show me move right there by the Wolverines gets them the zone. Ferry though, he wasn't buying. Yeah, he coach. broke that up and was just able to clear it to the neutral zone. Relieve a little pressure here for the Falcons. Crandall separated his man, but the Falcons are unable to clear and the Wolverines are in Good business. Block. Sarnowski with a big block right there. Nolan laying the body out. Crandall in front, moved it to Dubendorfer. Oh, what a pass. Dubendorfer to Ferry. Ferry to himself. Tried to find Shooty the beauty. That puck rolled in the corner. And Shooty was able to play it behind the net, but Michigan's up and away. Good breakout here. Good job there. I got to admit, Shooty on the back check. Took a quick look behind him. Ooh. Sarnowski Big. behind the net. Battling. Oh, a chance there quickly from behind the net be in icing. front. Martin never had a chance really to see it, but just good positioning. Puck hit him. BG was able to knock it all the way back down. Here's Horvath. Power play goal here to put the Falcons back up by two for the assistant captain, Cam Horvath. And beautiful goal. Just stick to itiveness. And here's the stick to itiveness again. Oh, Horvath steps through two guys, got someone with him. Oh, no. Rang it off the post. And oh, Nitsky, it was a hot rebound to handle on your backhand. Nitsky couldn't do it. And who's your first man back? Horvath. Who gets the takeaway? Horvath. Horvath, Horvath, Horvath. Right. Kleinow took a rough ride into the far boards and then took an earful. And then Horvath gets the. Creates a turnover. A big old chirp, and here's a chance for Gray. Gray snaps one in that rebounds there. Kleinow couldn't clean it up. Ooh, two Pat Wolverines were there to defend it. Two on two coming back the other way. Zebel breaks that up like nothing. And tried to get the Falcons away. Wolverines a good job though, just to try to get some forecheck and go, and they don't. Not much for the zone entries here. They've been dumping the puck in, trying to work the forecheck. Almost worked right there, but Jaros is able to clear it. Patton, Jaros, and Odell. Yeah, Odell's now the center on this fourth line with no core. Playing good minutes here in the third period, playing with good energy, and playing most of the game when this line's been out here in the other team's end, and that's Michigan. Here's Granica. Got the Falcons on the board first in the second that period with a slap shot. Ooh, good hit there by Patton. Odell with the takeaway. Good job here by this line on the four check. First guy's in, second guy stays. Reads that play, ah. third guy stays deep. This is a chance here. It is gonna be icing. That was a good job by Michigan. Just to wait long enough and then hustle where the ref thought you were after it. But timeout. we're gonna go a timeout here with Bowling Green, I believe. A good timeout. All right, so two games remaining after this game in Louisville this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Chip, what is on after that? And then the following week, we will not be, I will not be in Cincinnati. Uh, not next week, not this weekend, not the following weekend, but the weekend after that. So the 8th, 9th, and 10th of February is the league tournament. That will... League tournament. Uh, there will be a... Uh, all games will be streamed uh, by probably by a team's uh, broadcast group. Uh, last year, we had the privilege of doing it um, for the T... So you're saying I didn't do good enough this year? We didn't get invited well, no, back? No, no. Last we, year's group was a little bit better, so you guys we, got invited back. We um, 
Well, they wouldn't make us let us. Ha- I'm I'm not available either. So. Well, either which way. And it's way. the last weekend of high school hockey up here before playoffs start in Northwest. So Ohio. two this weekend in Louisville, the following weekend off, and then league playoffs in Cincinnati the weekend after that. Correct. All right. That shot blocked by Crandall laid it into the Michigan end, but once again, Michigan wants to turn it up ice quick, but they turned it up to Updike, and he's got it ahead for Seals. No icing on this play. Seals is there first. Got Rudo with him, but Michigan's able to break it again, but did not get a clean breakout this time as the Falcons were able to clog up the neutral zone. Falcons wanted too many men on the ice there. Michigan with a change. Poked by Granica. Granica with a great job there and a one-on-one. And now there's support here. And Falcons turn turned back behind the net and this is Michigan from the corner and that's a fly (laughs) Chip you can comment on that that was Crandall again in front I gave his guy a little push but apparently it was a big deal apparently it was a big deal it's too 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 early in the morning for for this For all you Cleveland Cavaliers fans of a few years back, I can hear some fans yelling, Verizal, (laughs) Verizal, the flopper. Very gets the puck out of the zone. Oh no, great hold in there by the Wolverines. Oh, this is a puck that just barely stayed in. It's gonna be an important job to clear this one. A minute 30 to go in the period and the game, Falcons cannot get the clear. Very close twice now, one clear is not gonna do it, but it's just gonna relieve some of this pressure. It does relieve the pressure. Here's Dubendorfer with Ferry. So they dump it back in, I would say Horvath's gonna get there first, but once Michigan gets the puck out, expect the goalie to come out too. Great cycle here by Dubendorfer and Ferry. Horvath had it behind the net, lost his stick and lost the puck. Michigan's away, three on three. Oh, Nitschke oh, cleared it up, up though, and this is Klein now alone, all the way, breakaway style. Jack Klein oh. now, oh, the good. jack attack missed it up high. Thunder Contact the behind play. the play with Horvath. He looks shaken up, but he'll stay high. 45 seconds remain in the third period. Falcons holding on to a two goal lead. Goals by Granica, Jaros, and Horvath. Have the Falcons looking good right now. 30 seconds remaining, Chip. Michigan yeah. putting on a push, but they haven't got the goalie out. I thought they might get the goalie out at the two-minute mark, and maybe that was too late, but now they're not even trying for him. They're definitely on the forecheck here, but 15 seconds remaining. They're not going to get the goalie out. Stick. No icing. That should do it. 10 seconds remaining. The Falcons over the Wolverines here by two. The push is still on by Michigan, but Ferry will clear this one. The clock winds down and BG beats Michigan for the second time this year. They got him up in Ann Arbor, and now they get him down here at Slater Family Ice Arena, Bowling Green, Ohio. Three to one is gonna be your final. What a great effort, Chip by Bowling Green, you gotta like the one goal against. Yeah, three goals, four, it was enough to win today. Maybe not what the fans wanted, you want some more scoring, but you gotta be impressed with the effort defensively here by Bowling Green. Yeah, I think it was a good team effort. I think that one goal that Martin allowed wasn't his fault, so I think you could put partial blame on the refs there, you could put partial blame on the Falcons for taking the penalty originally but shouldn't have been a penalty in the first place and it was a five on four goal by michigan power play goalie score but horvath got a stick knocked out of his hand so it's technically a five on three michigan they made it a two one game at that point but a huge power play goal by horvath in the third period really gave bg some breathing room yeah i i, I think bowling green outplayed michigan for the most for the better half of that game um in their last home game of the season 
Last home game of the season, folks. My last broadcast. It's been a true pleasure this year to bring these games to you with Chip Crennan. Chip will be in Louisville this weekend, so make sure you tune in to Bowling Green Club Hockey Television, powered by YouTube, in great ACHA action tonight. Coming right at you with a 3-1 to one Bowling Green Falcon win. Chip, it's been a pleasure, my friend, and I'll be tuning in over the weekend. We've prepared you. We've prepped you for this moment all season. <laughs> Good luck down in Louisville. Thanks, and you as well in St. John's Bowling Green and uh, Lake and Clay, you said, on Saturday. Yeah, and you folks at home, yeah, some great BCSN action this weekend. You folks at home, thanks for all the great support this year. We've really had a great time, and it's been an exciting season, a real exciting team. Let's do it this weekend in Louisville, and then, of course, league playoffs. Hey, I'll see ya. <laughs>